and the field is locked away or getting a little bit edgy is traffic warden an attendant going in with him in barrier number three set to go racing Switzerland broke away very, very well in the middle of the field with Traffic Warden, Lady of Camelot and Growing Empires right up there too. And speed shown by Yoshinobu over towards the flat side rail. Bodyguard is going to lead Traffic Warden, Lady of Camelot and Yoshinobu. Growing Empires up with the leaders in the middle of the track from Coleman Gatsby's. Then came Stolly Bolly, Switzerland behind those horses now after a fast start. Then Gallant Sun first settler, Bellatrix Star, Bitter Creek as well back with Enriched. So the front Front runner bodyguard for Hugh Bowman and sprinted away about four lengths in front coming onto the course proper from Yoshinobu second then traffic warden lady of Camelot Stolly Bolly then growing empire up the middle of the course four off the front Coleman next from Bellatrix Star Switzerland gallant son first settler and Gatsby's has waited with they got to the leader and now lady of Camelot growing empire go through with also Stolly Bolly and Switzerland right down the outside at the 150 Switzerland sprints hard takes the lead draws a length in front, two lengths in front. This is going to be dominant. Switzerland, a big winner by two and a half. Bellatrix star, photo third, growing empire or Lady of Camelot from Stolly Bolly. Then Gatsby's Coleman back behind them. Bitter Creek first settler, traffic warden, gallant son Yoshinobu enriched. And after going hard, bodyguard knocked up to finish last in the Coolmore stud. James McDonald again. Switzerland has raced away for a dominant display did it at both ends too having a look at the overhead shot clearly jumped a length in front of anything else in the race then an embrace between james mcdonald and chris waller and a few giggles as well they combine once again to win the coolmore this time it comes with switzerland james he was a length in front of everyone two strides in but the plan was covered so talk us through how you've got to, I guess, fight a few things and some urges to take advantage of that and bring him back to come under you. Uh, just absolutely delighted, to be fair. Um, to answer your question, he, he's, got, he's got the most beautiful nature and he allows me to do whatever I want on him. Um, he's so, so push-button. And when, he, when he's uh, so alertly away, I just sat on him and let, let the race unfold around him. And he allowed me to do that, and um, he makes the jockey's life so easy. But such a talented colt. He's got gears to burn, and after his jump out here the other day, we were cooking with gas. He went super. I believe the upside this guy might have. We've got to sort of celebrate what's just happened now, but what this guy might be capable of, given what he's doing and the manner he's doing it. Yeah, for sure. He's got, he's got more to come. Um, but he's got well above average ability he's got a, an absolute brilliant demeanor he's got an incredible turn of foot and he can sustain it for a long time he's got all the attributes to be a, a top sprinter and there's two races probably here in the in the uh, autumn that has got a big circle around them but obviously he'll he'll thicken up he'll develop he'll get stronger and, and better he's a beauty maybe a trip back to the northern hemisphere to come in the winter well done on 101 hopefully ryan doesn't pinch the ride <laughs> A remarkable sixth Coolmore stud stakes for Chris Wallace since the race become a group one in 2006. Number six comes with an outstanding performance from Switzerland. Chris, well done. Take us back though to mid-September when he has his first start at three and a run to the Rose and you had a bit of work to do to get the train back on the track. Yeah, he did, um, but we've got a great team that have got us back on track. Um, yeah, he just got excited and hurt himself and got agitated and, and um, yeah, it was just, just uh, one of those things that young young kids do and that's all he is he's a young teenager he's finding his way he became a man I thought last start with a dominant win and the writing was on the wall that a group one wasn't far away so to win a stallion making race like this it's it's a big deal um, this race is well, this week is so many great stories but for the Colts this is the race you have to win so you know, I'm privileged to be training these types of horses um, because I didn't get them when I started but now um, yeah, it's a privilege. Could it have been a little bit beneficial that the issue in the runs of the Rose many hasn't had as many runs as some of those that went to races like the Everest? Um, I'm not sure. It's, it's hard to quantify things in racing, but yeah, things, if you're, if you're patient, you look after your horse, they look after you. Do you believe he was a length in front, two seconds in? Uh, no, no, I was just, no, I, I could see he jumped well, he settled well, James was just sitting on him not quietly, and 
That was the pre-race plan. Be where he's comfortable. It was as simple as that. Obvious benchmark for him is home affairs, given the ownership and the jockey. What's the plan for him for the remainder of his three-year-old season? Well, the beauty of, of winning a Group 1 race, it takes a little bit of pressure off. We've got to just now maintain his values. So logically, races like the New Market and Royal Ascot would be in our considerations. Chris, congratulations on a sixth Coolmore. Thank you very much.